Researchers have been trying to make computers more efficient by making them out of carbon and using iron. Yes, we're making carbon-based computers, and they might need blood, and we'll talk about it. Also, a group did make a two-dimensional computer, and we'll talk about that too. One thing you have to know is that although we're making very small computers, they used to take up a living room worth of space. One issue is that we can increase speed as much as we want, but unless the data can be processed quickly enough, it's not going to do much. So why not make it two-dimensional? Okay, it's not actually two-dimensional, but it is, for our purposes, microscopic. It's one single layer of molecules thin, and it's a molybdenum compound. No matter how many times I say that word, I'm never going to say it right. Molybdenum. We are, in fact, moving away from silicon because it has its limitations. Now, this has the potential to make much, much smaller transistors than what we're currently capable of, and ultimately, much smaller chips. Although, I don't want my cell phone to be any smaller, okay? This may actually be a major breakthrough for how we make computers. And I have talked a little bit about this, but we are now making carbon-based computers. Carbon is highly conductive, so electricity can pass through it. It can also be insulated, not unlike our neurons, and you can tune it, so the correct amount of electricity passes through it. Carbon-based computers are much more efficient, and they're also pretty darn biocompatible, which means they're going to be implemented in other areas like prosthetics. I also like it because I'm a carbon-based lifeform. This doesn't solve the major issue, which is how we get information processed. When you see something, you're already projecting what you think is going to happen before it ever happens. So there's no lag time. But if you're a computer, you're going to have to take in the information, you're going to have to process it, and then you're going to need to react. That takes a while. Now, carbon is really useful for this because you can take a photon, turn that directly into an electrical signal, and they can operate both on the local level and they can take that information back and then process it. This is something far more similar to how we behave. And it's one of the reasons that modeling computation off of our brains has been such an exciting area. However, iron can be used for just that. And this is all part of an area called neuromorphic computation, where we try to make computers look very much like our brains. Now, it's not exactly like blood. Iron is used, yes, and that's because it has conductive properties, which makes it fine for use in electronics, but it's also that it has the magnetic properties. So once the electricity passes through it, it does change the direction of those dipoles, kind of like how a magnet works, and that makes it really useful as a memorister. It's a way of remembering the current that passed through it and a way of remembering information. This means that you could train a computer to see something, and it would slowly be able to recognize it. It's not just going to have categorical knowledge of what a cat is, it's going to remember that it's seen a cat before. Speaking of which... Though it's not exactly the same as we use iron in our bodies, but I do love that iron is important to us, as is carbon, and our computers are starting to catch up with that. If you want to deep dive on any of these topics, just leave a comment below. And follow me for more, I try to find the weirdest stories for you guys.